I would love to invite up uh, Dr. Alvaro Quintanal Villalonga from Charles Rudin's lab. And he's going to be continuing our theme of puppies this week um, at, with his title of his talk, Who Let the Chihuahua Out? Well, size matters. Probably most of the ladies in the audience will agree with me on that, and some of the gentlemen as well, right? You're right. In the field of lung cancer, size does matter. And that is because we divide lung tumors into two different types, according to the size of the units that compose them, the cells. On the one hand, we have tumors that are made out of bigger cells. These cells are like huskies. They can be scary. They can bite you if they're hungry, but they are not the worst. Some of these tumors are associated to patients that never smoke or that smoke very little. And fortunately, for these tumors, we count on effective therapies that may allow the patient to survive for years and years. On the other hand, we have tumors that are made out of smaller cells. These cells are tiny, aggressive, and essentially evil, like chihuahuas. <laughs> these type of tumors are associated to patients that smoke a lot. And unfortunately, for this, we do not have any effective therapies. So patients may die within months of their diagnosis. On occasions, a patient that never smoked can develop a husky tumor. And when the patient is treated with the anti-husky therapy, the tumor responds, the tumor shrinks. Many of the husky cells die. But some of them are smart enough to transform into chihuahua cells, which are immune to the therapy. And this can regrow the tumor, leading to relapse. At that point, the patient may die within months. How on earth can a husky transform into a chihuahua? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. The goal of my research is to identify genetic drivers of transformation. To do that, we perform molecular analysis on pre-transformation husky samples and post-transformation chihuahua samples in very high detail, patient by patient. And that way, we're able to see which genes change during transformation. Then, we can leverage drugs that inhibit those genes, anti-chihuahua therapy. Then, if we treat a patient with a husky tumor at high risk of transformation, not only with the anti-husky therapy, but also with the anti-chihuahua therapy, we'll be attacking the transformation before it even happens. And we might be able to delay or even prevent the transformation. This will extend the time that the patient is on therapy, which will significantly increase their survival. Hopefully, the research that I'm doing, along with that of other researchers working in the same field, won't let the chihuahua out anymore. Thank you so much.